So I had some thoughts about Jeremiah 29, 11 that says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and an expected end. I want to share this thought with you because over time, in my experience, when I heard this scripture, I would just go to prayer after quoting the scripture to remind God, God, you said you know the thoughts that you think towards me. And the truth is that God did not forget. He knows it. He was the one that said that. And from the context of that scripture, he was speaking to the children of Israel who were in captive in Babylon. And then he told them, I know the plans I have towards you. I know where you are right now. I know the situation you find yourself right now. And I have not forgotten about you. And then it is something that we look into our lives and say, I know what I'm going through, right? It is not convenient. It is not something I would like to go through. It is not something that is palatable. But then sometimes we feel like God has forgotten us. And then when we come to pray, we are praying as if to remind God who has forgotten us, not to forget us. It's a good thing and it's a good way to actually come to God. But then God doesn't forget because he said he will never forsake us, nor leave us alone, but he will always be with us. God said, I know the plans I have towards you. When I research that word, know, it is the Hebrew word yada, Y-A-D-A which actually is a very deep word that means being acquainted with, having full knowledge of, like God full fleshly have our plans in his hands, our destiny in his hands. So it means he is the one that designed our destiny. There's no way he would forget. He knows everything about us. I used to think, God, you know the plans that you have towards me. Then I start bringing up my ambitions to place before him. Instead of asking him, what is the plan? Because the truth is, he said, I know the plans I have towards you, good plans and not of evil, so that I will give you an expected end. The question I ask myself, which is the first point of today's video is, do you trust God's heart? It felt like I know what God has planned for me. It felt like I know what is what that expected end should look like. But in reality, none of us knows how our life will turn out to be. We are all expecting something good to happen to us, but none of us know how. It will happen. We all have ambitions, which is a good thing. We all have things that we desire. We all have dreams and visions. But then God has our purpose in his hands. So if God says, I know, who said it? He said it. Did we ask him to say that he knows the plan? No. Did we ask him to tell us, to give us assurance? We did not ask him. He said it. I know the plans I have towards you. I just want to assure you, but then he did not give us any detail. So what do we do is to trust his heart. At this point, you do not know where it is heading, but you know that there is someone that knows. It looks like if I am going to a place where I do not really know the environment, thank God for Google Map today, but where you don't have Google Map or your network is not good, you would meet someone who knows the area very well and tell them, this is where I am going. Please, can you lead me there? And they will direct you. So now God says, I know without details. What do you do? It's to follow him. Trust his heart. And the truth is that, which I just want to encourage you with today's video, God has your best interest at heart. God wants the best for you more than you even want for yourself. And the purpose he has for you will bring you good. I love the fact that scripture did not try to hide this from us. He said, it is good. It is not a disaster. It is not evil. It is for me to give you an expected end, a future and hope. God literally let us know that these thoughts that he thinks towards us are all good. And Psalms 139 confirms that. Verse 17 says, how precious are your thoughts towards me, O God. They are more than the grains of sand. Even if I would count them, I cannot outnumber them because they are too precious. So now, if we know that God has all these precious thoughts towards us, we should not allow our limited mind to affect how we believe and trust God. Because our mind is limited. No matter how many dreams and thoughts you have, Scripture lets us know that we have a God who is able to do exceedingly more than what we can ask, think, or imagine. So all I'm asking in this first point is, do you trust God's heart? Do you trust that he has your best interest at heart? Do you trust that the plans he has for you are good, like he said? Or maybe the situations of life or where you find yourself has made you start thinking, maybe these plans are not so good. Or maybe 
I want to marry a good wife. I desire to marry a good wife. And I believe that God should, based on what he said, have good plans to give me a good wife. But right now, I don't really think, based on the perception you have of him, I don't really think that you will give me a good wife or a beautiful wife, the kind that I want. No, God won't give you something that is not good for you. He said that it is good, not evil, to give you a future and hope. So if God said this, do you trust his heart? When we read this scripture, we immediately plunge into prayer. God, you said, you know the plans you have towards me, plans of good and not of evil, to give me an expected end. Remember your promise and all of that. It is a good thing to pray to God. It is a good thing to reach out to God. But then, that scripture was not said for you to just pray without knowing which direction to pray to. From that passage, it said, Then you will call upon me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. First thing. The second point I want to let you know is that God listens and hears your voice. So don't come to him to pray as if you are trying to convince him to hear you. He hears you. He heard you the first time you said it. And he is answering. Are you sensitive to receiving his answer? Are you sensitive to waiting on him and his season and his timing? And when we talk about God's timing, I know sometimes we get this all messed up. Like we are actually the ones waiting on God. No, God is waiting on us. God is waiting on our maturity. God is waiting on us to reach out to him, to open up our hearts and open up our lives to him, to give him permission. Yeah, you do not know you can give, you need to give God permission for your life. Yes, you need to. That is why God does not batch into your life and comes to take you to surrender to him by force. God does not make you believe him by force. God does not make you do anything by force, but he makes you do everything you get to do by choice. Now, it will take your choice of submitting yourself to him before you can get to a place of getting to work with him to get the purpose that he wants for you. Now, scripture says, commit your plans to the Lord and he will make it to come true. And it says in Psalms chapter 37 that you should delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. That scripture did not say, delight yourself in the Lord and God will make all your ambitions come true. That is what we always get wrong. It did not say when you come to God, because people even mistake delighting yourself in the Lord to mean come to service, come to church, serve God in this unit and that unit, or do this and that for God. It is not about what you do for God. It is about you submitting yourself in surrender to God. The word delight in that place means pliable, be soft in the hands of God. So God says, be pliable, be soft, allow me to bend you, allow me to direct you, allow me to lead you. And sometimes we are so stiff. We don't let God direct us. We don't let God lead us. We think we know the way. That is why when we come to God, you know the plans that you have towards me, plans of good. We try to give God direction of how to do it. And you forget that this wasn't your plan from day one. It was his plan. And he knows what is best for you. Now, scriptures in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 let us know that we have become his poetry. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. This is a journey. This is a daily thing. This is not like once and for all thing. For us, it has to be daily because every day you wake up, you get fresh thoughts. Some of it are not positive. Some of it are. Some of it is you doubting yourself. Some of it is you being confused. Where am I even heading to? Now your birthday is upcoming and you're becoming older. What is happening in my life? Nothing is changing right now. God still says, I know the plans. Do you trust my heart? Can you submit yourself and be pliable and allow me to lead you the way I want to lead you? The third point is seek God. You have to know that most times when we say God knows the plan that he has towards us, we start seeking the plan and forgetting to seek the God who has the plan. Sometimes we go ahead to seek the things he says he will give us. You are seeking for healing. Instead of him to seek the healer, you are seeking for the healing. God, heal me, heal me, heal me. It's about the healing. It's kind of like God says, I know the plans that I have towards you. He said, give me the plan. Mm, just give me the plan. I don't need you. Definitely, if he gives you the plan, you are out. 
you're done with him. Like business deal, close. Nice doing business with you. And God says, no, seek me. So in that same Jeremiah 29, then you will seek me, inquire for and require me as a vital necessity and find me when you search for me with all your heart. This is very crucial because God does not just want you to come to him just to get what you want to get and run away. God wants you to seek him. If you want to fulfill your destiny, if you want to fulfill the plans he has for you, the person to seek is him. Not pursuing the plans, but pursuing him, he will lead you to the plans. He will make you walk in the plans. And this is very practical as you're walking through life, as you are dreaming, as you're planning, put God in everything. Don't allow your ego to think that you have it all figured out. Don't allow your ego to think that you can do this one now. It's a simple thing. You can do it by yourself. Why do you need to pray to God about this? Ego, the way I heard it, which was so beautiful, it means ease God out. Which is, there are many things in our life that will be like, no, I don't need to involve God. I don't need to bother God about this. Sometimes with the best of intentions, but your best intention does not still meet up with obedience to God. Seek God, not things. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. It's very important because it said everything you need, not everything you want. Your wants could be your ambitions. You want to drive this particular kind of car and that particular kind of car. Definitely God can give you that money, but then that is not what you need. Because all of that, the need you want to fulfill is just to show off. If you have a good car that you can drive, I'm not saying that is bad, but if you have the money to do it and you want to do it, but I don't feel like God will want you to do that. Because the resources he gives you, he expects that you would be a good steward and steward those resources well to the glory of him. Because if you truly seek him, he will give you desires. He will make you know what to desire and what is right to desire. It will change the scope of your heart from a stony to a soft heart. Now, the last point is obey and walk with God. The truth is that we are on a journey and our life is only a puzzle to us, not to God. God has the big picture of our life like this and he is in control of both time and everything. So time is not against God. God made time. God is in charge of time. That is why Everything you can work for, for 30 years, you can make it happen in three days or even an hour or three hours. That is the kind of God we serve. That is why scripture says a thousand years is like a day unto the Lord and a day is like a thousand years. That used to confuse me. And I'm like, how does that make sense mathematically? When I got to the revelation that God is in charge of time, God made time. So time is not a constraint to God. I realized then that. When it comes to time and our lives, God is not bothered. God is just waiting on us. Do you want to obey me? Do you want to walk with me? If you are ready, I'm ready. So literally, when we even say we are waiting on God, it's as if God is saying, I am waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Because after you said you are waiting on God, pray, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. You leave that place and all you go to do is remove God from all your plans. Try to do things by yourself because now you feel the energy, you feel inspired and all of that. No, bring God into everything. Paul said, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing. Now he's on a journey. But I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. I am not just here being a child of God for no reason. I am a child of God with the knowledge that there is a purpose for why he created me. People are dying every day. People are gone every day. People die from birth. Why did I not die? Why am I still breathing? The fact that I'm still breathing means I still have much more to do. I know I have ambitions. Everybody have and everybody should. But then beyond my ambition, I have a purpose. And that is what I'm pursuing. I'm not going to pursue my ambition at the expense of my purpose. God forbid. That is my heart. That is my desire. And I hope that this little sharing about this Jeremiah 29 will help your heart and make you trust God more, plunge deeper into God and go all in to God. Because this is all about going all in to God. God, everything 
that you want me to do, I want to do them, all of it, without missing anyone, no stone unturned. That was why when Jesus walked on earth, he showed us how to walk in purpose, without being distracted, being focused, being disciplined, being assertive, being passionate, and then being humble. Because we need all of these things to work in our purpose. Thank you for watching today's video. I am Uwem Akpan. It is a great delight for me to have you watch this video and subscribe to this channel if this content is a blessing to you. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye. -bye.